In this program, we're going to be working with a new, uh, new method of storing data called an array. So an array is a list. So uh, some programming languages actually refer to it as a list. Uh, so the thing to think about is um, this is going to be a list of values that uh, all share a single type. Uh, so we can list integers together, characters, strings, uh, kind of whatever we want. Uh, I'd, I'd maybe we'll even do a Boolean one. Uh, so the way that we do this is we do this in an order and it's going to be very similar to um, declaring a regular variable. So the first thing that we start with is the type of the array. So we're, I'm going to make a, an array, it's an integer one, um, and uh, I'm going to call it numbers. So uh, this is, typically I do my array names as pluralized so that I, I know that it's like um, a sequence or a list of uh, values here. Uh, and then you use square brackets and put in a number so I'm going to put in the number four here, indicating uh, how many values are going to be in the array. So now uh, what I'm going to do is in this one, I'm going to explicitly declare what all of the values are. And this is like um, when you assign values to a variable upon declaration. Same thing. You don't have to do this, but I'm going to set them right here. So open curly brace, 12, 23, 34, and 45. So this is an array of numbers, so a list of numbers with four values, and those four values are 12, 23, 34, and 45. Now the important thing here, uh, especially when we're starting to actually program these, so the positions of the values uh, every value in an array has uh, its own address. So I've got this one at position zero, this one is in position one, this one is in position two, and this one is in position three. So the very important thing here is that uh, this first value is not in position one, it's in position zero. The last value is not in position four, it's in position three. Uh, so commonly mistakes come up where you try to access the last value of an array and you use the array's size as your judge. The size is four, the last position is always one less. So if you have an array with 5,000 values, the last value in the array is 4,999. Okay, so now uh, we've got our positions in order like this. So now if I wanted to, um, declare some that we're going to be using for the program, we'll do it in a couple of different ways. So the first one is going to represent the names of various candidates in some kind of election. So it's a string array, um, and its name is going to be candidates, and this is going to have five values in it. So we'll, um, we're going to assign these explicitly, so upon declaration. So I'm just going to come up with a name referring to like its position in the array here. So our first one, this will be one. This one will be two, Pac. This one will be three, PO. Uh, this one will be forest. And this one will be five. Okay, there we go. So we've got five names of the candidates. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to record an amount of votes for each of them. So uh, I'm going to go int votes. Uh, and there's going to be five positions here. Uh, so int votes. Uh, but I'm not going to declare them uh, at the outset. I'm going to record those uh, in... In, within the program here. So I've got uh, five positions for votes. So the first position in this list is going to refer to the amount of votes that the first candidate has. Okay, so now 
uh, let's imagine that I wanted to print out, if I wanted to access the first candidate's name from the candidates list. So I'm going to see out here. Uh, so first candidate. And then this one is going to be candidates. So I have to name the array that I'm accessing and then use square brackets to name the or uh, declare which of the positions in the array I'm going to be accessing. And I'll do an end L here. So let's run the program. It's already had this set up. Uh, so first candidate one. Um, now the next scenario here. Uh, let's decide that I, I wanted to change that. So we know that the first position uh, is not actually uh, one, it's a zero. So yeah, I'm going to change candidate zero. So candidate zero. So the first position candidate. Let's replace this with Zorro. Uh, let's put a capital there. Although I'm going to leave the remainder uh, as they are. So I'm going to use this to change the name and then I'll just do a copy paste here so that you can see that this is uh, actually working. So instead of first candidate, it's going to be new first candidate. Um, so I'll run this. Um, I, oh, there we go. I forgot to put an S here. So I'm going to pluralize that. Uh, there we go. So I've got my first candidate and then I've got my new first candidate. Um, okay. So now imagine that we wanted to print these out as a list. This is where they get really useful when we want to do something with all of them. So I'm going to put a little spacer here and then I'll put a list of the candidates here. So candidates. And, uh, and now this is going to be our list. So now what I want to do is I want to go to uh, print out all of them in order. So don't do this for just a second. Uh, so imagine it was going to be like one and then I was going to print out candidates zero. This is going to be the bad version. And then if I wanted to print out two, and then I put candidates one for that position, like you could do it this way, but it's not really a great idea. Uh, this is, uh, it doesn't take advantage of where we would use arrays. So for this, we're going to use a loop. Now, arrays use a tremendous amount of for loops. So we're gonna do a for loop. Uh, we're gonna do four, int i equals, now we start on the first position of the array, which is zero. And then we're going to go while this is a little bit different from maybe what we have done before, we're going to do while i is less than the size of the array. So we're going to go while i is less than five, so it won't actually get to five, which is good, it'll crash if it does. Um, and then we're going to print our value here. So we're going to do c out. Now here I'll actually incorporate the value i. Uh, put a little spacer here, candidates, and then I'm gonna put an i here. So the first time it goes through the loop, it's going to print position zero and then one and then two and then three and then four. So let's take a look at what this does. Okay, here we go. Here are, here's our list of candidates. Now, uh, we are not actually going to have this first one as candidate 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. I want it to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So sometimes you need to offset a little bit what your position is. So we're just going to do an i plus 1. So we're going to print as the candidate's number i plus 1, so it'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 instead of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'll pull this up so that you can see. There we go. I've got my five candidates in that order. And now I'm happy. So I'll put another spacer here. Okay. 
Now what I want to do is I want to load the second array, the votes array. So uh, I'm going to do another for loop here um, because I don't want to do these individually. So int i equals zero. You can just copy and paste if you want to save some time. While i is less than five, i plus plus. Uh, and then uh, what we're going to do is we're going to see out, enter the votes for, and then I'll name my candidate. Candidates I. We go uh, and then I will see in the vote but I'm going to store it in position I so just like uh, we were outputting these in order we're gonna be inputting them in order as well so when it prints out enter the votes for Zorro they're going to get stored in the position related to that person candidate in position zero votes for that person in votes position zero uh, so now what I want to do is in the final one, I want to output the results of the election. So I don't want to overcomplicate things and uh, use this to declare a winner, although maybe later you could easily see how that could be done. Um, we're just going to say how many votes each of the candidates received. So for int i equals zero, while i is less than five, the size of the array, I plus plus and then every line here we're going to do a C out uh, candidates I uh, votes I and then we'll say that that is uh, votes there we go so let's take a look at how this works out. So I've got my list of candidates here. Uh, I'm going to enter the votes for Zorro. So uh, let's say five votes, Tupac seven votes, 3PO nine votes, uh, Forrest one vote, and Fievel three votes. There we go. And then the final result is you get to see the votes for every single candidate. So hopefully you can see the value of, uh, you know, kind of collecting values that all have a similar type uh, and meaning into a list so that you can use the power of a for loop or something uh, to do a whole bunch of different things. So we're going to be practicing a lot more with these in uh, the next couple videos.